Good afternoon, folks. My name is Paul Rankin. I'm the Provincial Manager in KZN. Um, I work for an organization called FEDSAS. And today we're going to be speaking to our Center of Technology Manager, Rian Vandenberg, who's going to be speaking to us about a very interesting um, product uh, process whereby registered SMSs and registered emails can be delivered to your parent community. Um, I'll hand over straight away to Rian Vandenberg, who's going to be introducing Norman Colling from Registered Communication. Uh, thank you, Paul. Goedemiddag allemaal. Ek uh, weet ons is een gemengde gehoor vandag, so net een vinnige uh, woord, uh, hartelike woord van welkom. En soos Paul gesê het, uh, kom ons vooral mekaar, hoe gaan dit? Ek gaan vir julle sê, dit gaan goed met my hier in Johannesburg. Um, ja, ons werk hard in die tye en is interessante tye, maar as een stuk permanentie wat begin vorm, om te sê, dit is hoe ons nou werk, so, so daar is een beetje meer zekerheid en permanentie in die feit dat ons weet, is on, ons is een geweldige onzekere tye. So, Hi, welcome my ons, everybody. Welcome to the session today. It's, it's really a privilege to have you with us. The Center for Technology has been very busy in these times, uh, mainly with consultation on, on e-learning and remote learning and zero rating of school websites and data costs and data privacy and, and, and a lot of things related to the, the um, uh, education technology space. Today we're featuring a company called Registered Communication and uh, I'm going to let Norman introduce himself in a, in a few minutes but welcome Norman, thank you for joining us today and, and sharing valuable information for our members. Um, and maybe I just want to say this in, in Afrikaans and English uh, just, just so that we get the whole audience in, but the Centrum for, for Technology is an initiative that a clump of years ago in FEDSAS ontstaan het and ons het aanvankelijk begin leer te sê, ons moet leer soos ons leef. Ons moet ons leerspasies, ons leerprocesse uh, begin uh, speelbeeld met dit wat in ons levensprocesse aangaan, die wereld om ons, uh, hoe dit lyk, hoe ons technologie gebruik. En, en ons het laatste jaar begin praat van dat ons moet begin bestuur en beheer en onderrug soos ons, soos ons leef. En nou gooi die proces amper om. Ons moet nou begin um, so, soos wat die lewe ons verplig, moet ons nou begin dinge doen, en, en dit sit ons baie meer in een technologische spasie, so, so die Centrum vir Technologie probeer op een gereelde basis kyk na nieuwe oplossings in die mark, en, en nieuwe mense, and that's where we met uh, someone called Registered Communication, and, and the Centrum for Technology is constantly trying to get valuable uh, uh, value-added services for the FEDSAS member schools so that we can improve the efficiency of our governance and our management. Uh, so we, we met Registered Communications a, a few months ago and they've got a product that I find very innovative, very electronic, um, more efficient than the paper process and even at a, at a better price and, and Norman's going to tell us about that. So so the Centre for Technology has this aim to serve the FEDSAS member schools with, with all matters electronic, digital, and um, technological to better the schooling process, to advance it. And in saying that, we, we created a theme for this year in which we say the, the governing body should have someone walk around and think about where the thinking cap of the CIO. You will hear me saying this every time we talk this year, that um, the chief information officer is one of the most important positions in commercial business at this point in time. Everything is information related and a lot of that information travels on digital platforms. So um, the efficiency that a chief information officer brings to the table, and it doesn't have to be someone in business that does it, but just someone that has that, that um, inclination, the, the denke, the ingesteltheid van, van the chief information officer. So, so I want to uh, encourage you guys to go, go think of the role in your SGB to consider the advancement, the development and the progress of how technology can better service our schooling processes. We do it with Pastel and D6 and whatever technology is out there to, to better our, um, our, our spaces. In the classroom technology, recording lessons, now online lessons. So, so we grab the tools of our time and make school more efficient. And that's that's effectively what we try and convey as a message. So Norman, with that being said, um, very welcome to, to uh, the Center for Technology. We're very glad to have a company like Registered Communication join us. And I'm gonna hand over to you to just introduce yourself uh, and then just uh, lead us through the short presentation that you've done. What problem do you fix? 
uh, how do you serve schools and how specifically is it tailored for the FETSA schools? So welcome to the session, Norman. Leon, thank you very much. Uh, just a quick sound check. Everything seems to be uh, okay, great. Um, Rion, thank you, Paul. Thank you, and, and welcome everybody. Thank you for, for this opportunity to have a quick chat. Uh, Registered Communication is a digital communications company, um, and we do various things that uh, most of you schools um, use on a daily basis already, things like uh, electronic statements or bulk SMSs, etc. But really, the the flagship product that we have, which uh, we'd like to introduce you to you today, is the electronic version of registered post. Now, it may sound like a bit of a mouthful, but um, everybody here is very aware that from a legislative requirement, there are certain notices that need to be sent to the parents, um, either by hand or by registered post. Uh, and that gets made a little bit tricky or, or becomes a little bit limiting when you start considering the fact that um, it's sometimes frowned upon to send these notices home to the parents with uh, the children involved um, or when the parents stay in different houses um, where mom and dad don't stay together and, and so on and so forth. So it becomes really tricky to get these, these notices to, to the parents but yet there's a legislative requirement to, to do so. So what we managed to do a couple of years ago is, is get a formal acceptance that our digital channels through various mechanisms and we'll go through the detail in the chat through our, our digital channels you're able to serve or able to distribute these formal notices that you need to uh, to parents either via registered email or registered sms or both and um, as i said our, our differentiate in the marketplace is our registered email and registered sms uh, channels carry the same legal validity the same legal weight as the paper-based registered post. Obviously, during the lockdown, uh, the, the challenge of getting notices to parents, uh, the, the use cases and the scenarios, those get turned on its head because uh, now nobody's at the school and you have no idea where the students are and so on and so forth. So, so during the lockdown, the, the use of or the adoption of electronic channels for, for your various notices um, obviously carries so more benefits to, to each of the schools. Um, so the, the, really the, the, the message or the chat I'd like to have today um, is, is not, not a sales pitch or, or anything, but it's just to show you how easy it is to send a registered email or registered SMS, um, no system requirements and, and, and so on. Um, please, if there are any questions along the way, Rion, if you can moderate those, those questions and um, I will endeavor to answer those as, as we go along. So based on, on time constraints, et cetera, I just want to give you a quick graphical overview of what we do, uh, literally two or three minutes, and then go into a live demo because uh, we, we find that the live demos are the, the, the most effective way of, of getting the functionality across. And that live demo would, um, would include a registered email and a registered SMS. If any of the participants in, in this call would like to be part of the live demo to receive these electronic registered messages, then um, just pop your email address or your mobile number into the comments. Rion, I'm guessing that's, that's okay. And then in the live demo, I'll, I'll try and pull some of those email addresses and, and, and mobile numbers across um, so that you can really get a hands on feel as to uh, what the process is all about. Um, I would just like to share my screen here quickly. And really, I'm going to be guided by you as to what, what we see or what we don't see. Uh, full screen. Great. Okay, so, so this is registered communication. A lot of blah, 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 blah about the, the company. Uh, we've been around for four years. The important bits of information to use the school is from from outside, from a credibility perspective, we, we are not brand new. We, we operate in various international um, localities. And specific to South Africa is this bit here. If you can see my mouth, I'll try and move it, move it slowly. Is South Africa has very specific legislation regarding electronic registered post. Uh, to paraphrase the legislation, everything must still go through the post office, and that is the, the the integration work and, and our status as a, a, a representative agent of SOPO that allows us 
to yeah, in the yellow box to enable you to send registered emails and registered SMSs. The process itself is incredibly straightforward. We have a sender, we have a recipient, and whether it's email or SMS, we just make sure that a copy of your message hits our registration service, which enables us then to track the, the delivery of your message, either to an, an inbox or to a mobile handset. Bottom left, the output of this message is your good old track and trace report. So for those of you who have had the um, unfortunate requirement to follow any kind of legal proceedings against parents, you'll know that the, the track and trace report becomes your piece of evidence that, that, that you need to prove that you indeed try to um, get hold of, of your parents in a, in a reliable and legislatively acceptable manner. And I'll, I'll show you more of the track and trace reports uh, along the way. From a legal requirement, I'm not sure how many of you, of, of you are from the, have a legal background from a legal fraternity. Um, I, this presentation will be shared with you uh, uh, after this the session, but there are various pieces of legislation that we have to com comply to. Um, if ever you've got insomnia, you're lying awake at two o'clock in the morning, give this a read, and I promise you, you'll go to sleep very, very quickly. The important part is the, t the tick boxes on the right-hand side where, where we comply with all the relevant legislation. As we start getting into the demo, what we're going to see today is uh, this is how to send a registered email. And I'll, as I said, I'll take you through a, a live demo. But in the effect of the, the registered email is that the only difference you need to do as a user is add in a CC address to your email. So you type up the email as you normally do with whatever software uh, you normally use to send your emails, add in your attachments, and we will give you a predefined CC address to add into that, into that message to make it registered. From a registered SMS perspective, uh, we give you access to an online uh, portal and an electronic interface. So all you need is an internet connection, and that gives you the ability to type up the notice, whatever custom text you require, uh, it gives you the ability to type up that notice and, and distribute that notice. In both cases, we track the delivery of those electronic messages and we produce your track and trace report. And as I said before, this becomes your, your evidence document, uh, which you need in order to prove what messages were sent to which parents and, and when they were sent. And that's really what I'm, what I'm going to show you. Uh, from a live demo perspective, uh, um, what we see here is, is this is my email system. This is my live uh, inbox. And now to send an email, no, Norman, sorry, you've got to, you've got to, just got to unshare your screen again. We're still seeing um, PowerPoint. Oh, wait, so just, okay, okay, let's yeah. uh, unshare, are we back? And now let's try that. There we go. Oh, yep. Right, as I was saying, we, um, we, we are, um, you're looking at, at my live inbox. So this is the same email system that, that you would use at your, at your schools or as uh, administrators for a school, uh, whether it's Outlook or Outlook Express or Gmail or, or Lotus or any of, any of those platforms. You, you would type up your, um, your, your Rion, why don't I have your email address here? Uh, you, you type in an email address. No, like no one, address. I, I just sent you a mail with seven delegates that uh, are willing to participate. Ah. So you can choose one of their email addresses as the example one uh, or more than one. Right. I'll, there's I'll there's, a, there's about seven, seven people that, that uh, chose to participate. Okay. I'm assuming you can still see my screen. Yes, we can. <laughs> so, so again, this is my, my live inbox. If there's something that pops up that shouldn't, I apologize. Um, but what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, I'll show you how easy it is to send an email to all of these. Um, so I'm going to go compose message, make that a bit bigger. And now I'm at a school and I'm typing out a, a message. So I want the, the following uh, people are, are parents. 
and you give the delays. And all you do is you're adding the email addresses of these variant parents into the recipient field. And I'll just bear with me, I'm going to include everybody here. Uh, in most cases, as you do this, you would be sending this to uh, two people, uh, mom and dad, both parents, uh, from a, a legislative requirement. So the, the point here is that there's no limit on who you need to send these to. I can get rid of, oops, uh, we can get rid of this now. Right, so there's uh, the relevant email addresses. I'm going to put in a subject line, yes, here's my notice. Um, the body of the email, dear parents, uh, the message we want to send, uh, kind regards. If I could spell that, it would also be good. Kind regards. And then um, in, also in the email world, you need to throw in attachments. It obviously need to add attachments. I'm going to pick the, the, the presentation that I use now as just as the example, but this is any attachment, any letter, any document, any PDF. It's your formal notice that you that you want to send to uh, to the recipients. As I mentioned, the only thing that you're going to do different differently is we will give you a predefined email address that you need to add into the CC field. What that email address does is make sure that a copy of this message goes across our servers and gives us the ability to track both legs of that message, the sender and the recipient, and therefore and thereby produce the, the track and trace report. Right, so at the speed of a, a live demo, I love these things, I'm going to click send. Uh, I'm going to go out of there. We can stop, we can start the clock now because what, what I'd like you to do as well is um, just compare this to the time it would take to send a, a normal message uh, out into the world. I'm going to reshare my screen to show you a registered SMS. Okay, so the email is busy going around the world um, and obviously I, I won't know or in a, only in a few minutes time will I know exactly when those recipients receive that message and I'll show you exactly how I know because that's the value of the track and trace um, functionality that, that we provide. When you sign up with us, each school will get a portal, uh, username and password, access control to uh, a web portal. And from here, you can do a whole lot of things. Uh, one, of the, one of the functions in here is on the left-hand side, you'll see uh, on the left-hand menu, the ability to send a registered SMS. Now, there are still a lot of people who are fairly allergic to sending uh, formal notices via SMS. However, when you consider that, um, that almost every single person in the country has a mobile phone, but not everybody has an email address, we find that uh, it registered SMS is by far our most popular delivery channel for these electronic messages. The, the, the ability to reach somebody by SMS uh, is really, really easy. So I'm gonna type up a, a registered SMS. Um, so on this Rion, have you seen any mobile numbers? There was a mobile number that came to a bit later, Rion. No, okay, okay. Uh, okay, I'll quickly share it uh, by mail. Oh, it came okay, through great. later. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up now. And someone says that. So, the, say again, Paul. Someone, someone said that they've got it. Which I mean, the mean, I think that means that they've got their email. Well, well there you go. Um, so these, these channels, these digital channels, allow you to send formal notices mm -hmm. at the speed of email or SMS, um, which is really, really powerful. You, you're not relying on. Uh, or you're not dictated to by a printer running out of paper or somebody needing to go into an office to print a letter, then you don't have an envelope and it needs to be walked to a post office and then wait for the mail truck to come and, and so on and so forth. It's making use of the digital channels that are, that are currently available. Back to the registered SMS, um, in the middle of the screen, 
you, you have the ability to type your, your message as, as free text. Uh, or to make your, your life even easier, we, we, have, uh, we give you the ability to store some predefined templates. So you'll have three or four different notice types that you, um, that you need to distribute, and you might want uniformity in the messaging that you, that you send. So I just created this, this template. I called it Schools S41 as an example of a formal notice, uh, Section 41 notice that, that needs to be distributed. And, and here you'll have the, obviously the ability to edit this, um, this, this message. So if I want to say, dear Mark and Debbie, as, as the parents, whatever it might be, I edit the message. Within the SMS, I have um, created, sorry about that. Within the SMS, I've, I've created a link to a document as well. So SMS is a fantastic channel. If I copy and paste that link, uh, just tell me if my screen share messes up. I've just opened another tab. If I copy and paste that link, it, it's effectively a web document that you can distribute via SMS. Um, so you have the ability to put your color logos on this document, uh, to highlight fields, to, to uh, change color of fonts to, um, for emphasis, and, and so on and so forth. And, and again, this is a formal document that can be sent by, by SMS. So back to the SMS tab. Um, I, sent, I sent you two numbers, Norman, two, two separate mails with a number in the, there we go. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to go to this one. So just forgive me as I copy and paste these, these numbers across. So that's number number one. Here's, oh, sorry, that's not gonna work. So I, I, because this is a, an international platform, uh, the, the numbers need to be in international format. Um, so that one, that, this one here will fail, but it, it makes for a good demo if a message fails. Um, so here I've, I've, I've got uh, two valid mobile numbers that I'm going to send to. There's a third number that I know already is going to fail because it's in the, in the wrong format. And there's a registered letter that is now going to be distributed via SMS. Just going to click send. So these two recipients, I'm not sure who you are, but you just keep your phones close by and you'll see when you get um, those notices. And when they do come through, also click on that link to, to get the full user experience. If I go back to my inbox, obviously at very, very high risk, you'll see these emails that have come through here. Uh, these are the track and trace reports that me as the sender gets. So these are the emails, some of the emails that are, that are sent out. So if I open these track and trace reports, and I'll go into it in more detail, um, I have the ability to know exactly when the recipient received their, their message as, as well. Um, so if they, for the people who gave the email addresses, if you can go into your inbox and, and have a look at the messages that are, that are waiting for you, um, we'll be able to tie up the date and timestamps, et cetera, as to when, uh, when messages were sent and, and when they were received. Okay, so, so, so what I've done is I, I've sent a registered email to a whole lot of people and I've sent a registered SMS to a whole lot of people. And I think that that whole process, there were, were there eight messages distributed and it's taken seven minutes to do that. So very efficient using these, um, these electronic channels. I'm gonna start with a registered email now because now we, we need to close the loop. I've sent out these messages, so what? I need to now start retrieving the track and trace reports uh, so that at least I know what the parents are doing, if I need to follow up with a phone call, or if I need to, unfortunately, pursue legal options or whatever the case may be, um, I need to have all my evidence documentation available and, and ready. So on the, on the left, as I said, I'm going to start with registered email. When I click on certificates, I can see here, uh, just by a, a simple date range, I can see the message that I sent 
on, on this date and time, and I can see all the recipients. Now, each of these recipients, if you can see by the, 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 the bold uh, addresses, each of these recipients receives their own track and trace report because it says if you've sent two paper notices, or in this case, what's it? Seven paper notices to seven different recipients, legally you need seven different track and trace reports. So, so here in, in, a, in a portal view, I, I can see exactly what was sent. Uh, from a dashboard perspective, I can see whether the messages were delivered or not. So if the message wasn't delivered, as you'll see in the SMS case, I'm sure there'll be a, a big fat red cross there. So it brings your attention straight away. Well, hang on, there's a problem. Let me implement a, a plan B. And on the right here, I can then uh, download those track and trace reports, the, the registration certificates, which, which I'm, I'm going to do for this, this top one. And at the bottom, you'll see this, this track and trace report is, is busy downloading. If I go into this track and trace report, Rion, just nod if you can see the, the certificate. Awesome, thanks. The, the, the track and trace report is your evidence document as to what was done. Now, in the electronic world, uh, we can show a lot more evidence than in the paper world. Uh, what I mean by that is, in the paper world, once somebody puts a notice into an envelope and seals the envelope, nobody really knows what's inside that envelope. But in the electronic world, you'll see we, we actually know what's inside the, the message. We can prove what the actual message was that was delivered. So, so first and foremost, uh, in this section here, you have all the sender and the recipient details. Um, you have the date and time of sending and, and receiving. And we know from the comment that Paul passed that one of the recipients uh, received the email really, really, really quickly. Here is the subject line that, that I used in my outbound email. This gray box is the body of the message that, that was sent. And if I scroll down, yeah, this PDF um, is the attachment that was sent. So uh, the, we embed the PDF document into the actual certificate as well as evidence. So as I scroll down, you watch the, the scroll bar on the side. As I scroll down, this is the document that, that was sent. So in, in the case of, of, of a school, this would be your section 41 notice or your a notice of qualification or exam results or what, whatever it might be. Um, there's your, your track and trace report. Uh, there's a whole different legal discussion that, that will ensue. If I scroll right to the bottom, uh, th this part here, all this technical metadata, um, the message as it goes around the world, etc. And this entire document is, is signed by with a with an electronic signature that uh, belongs to the post office and is a link back to the legality and so on and so forth. Um, you'll be able to look at that in the in the presentation that was that was sent. Uh, I just want to so that's the registered email. So as as I said, for for each of the recipients, there were seven recipients. As I scroll down here, I'm able to download uh, the seven certificates. For some reason, the one to Marianne. Uh, hasn't been, the certificate hasn't been uh, generated yet, um, but would, and the one to Marni hasn't been generated yet either. So a real-time update as to when the track and trace reports are, um, are available. In extreme cases, it takes about 24 hours to get the, the track and trace report, which just means that tomorrow when you come into the office, everything's waiting for you. I just want to show you the registered SMS very quickly. I'm very conscious of, of, of the time. Um, but the, the look and feel of the registered SMS track and trace reports are, are exactly the same. So under registered SMS and uh, certificates, when this, um, when this decides to load up, you'll see that there are, are certificates. Uh, here's a big red cross for, for that number that has the incorrect format. Uh, or, a, or a tick for the, the other search that's ready. And again, I can click on that message, download the certificate, um, and, um, and, and there's my, my track and trace report. 
from a from a recipient perspective for those of you who who weren't part of this this demo from a recipient perspective in both cases of registered email and registered sms the recipient also gets the track and trace report uh, and that small bit of functionality makes a massive difference in getting responses from parents ultimately that's what you want from a parent you want them to pick up the phone and phone you you want them to make a plan somehow you want them to respond so uh, the, the fact that the recipient gets the track and trace report is that whole I know that you know that I know that you know scenario uh, where the recipient can't ever use the excuse oh you didn't tell me I didn't know I didn't get it um, and uh, in in various scenarios uh, in where our customers use registered email and registered SMS they find first and foremost that the responses received from um, the recipients the response rates just go through the roof so, so that's registered email and registered SMS as the live demo, the ability to send a formal notice via electronic channels, but at the speed of, uh, of email and SMS. Can I come in there, um, Norman? I don't know if you, if you have a final comment that, I, that I'm interrupting now. No. Um, yeah, we, unfortunately, we had a few um, email addresses come in after 2.30 and, and one just <laughs> as we speak. Um, uh, so I, I'm assuming that people would like to see your presentation and I'm going to mail them, uh, all, all participants will get the presentation. Um, so for me, just, uh, before we take two questions, uh, that's on the system, and I think Paul's got them ready for me, it's kind of a no brainer, irrespective of when, whether we can travel or not, or whether we can go to the post office or not, because number one, the efficiency, you don't have to travel. You don't have to go get a stamp. You don't have to stand in the queue. You do it from your computer. Um, and that's just so much more time efficient and cost efficient. Number two, uh, I, I think you, you haven't shared it, but we, we might just want to talk on the cost. But if I remember correctly, the costing of this process, it's, it's not additional costing. It's a cost that replaced the existing cost, but it's probably a 40% discount, if I remember correctly. Can you just, just explain that? And then there were another two questions in the, in the box that uh, Paul will flash on the screen for us. But just talk to us about the costing and the efficiency um, um, of that, and then Paul will lead us into the Q&A. Yes, so, so the direct cost is the, the question that um, maybe I should have covered right, right in the beginning. Uh, currently, your registered letters are costing, uh, I think it's 31 Rand 80. So call it around number 30, 32 Rand. There might have just been a pricing increase. Uh, the equivalent registered email or registered SMS is 18 Rand 50. So there's um, just over a 10 Rand saving per notice that, that gets sent out uh, from a direct cost perspective. Um, the indirect cost benefit, as, as I touched on, is you don't need to purchase any software. Um, you, you, as long as you know how to send an email or you have access to the internet, you can distribute these messages. Uh, they, they, um, there are no minimum monthly fees, there's, there's, no, there's no retainers involved, there's no minimum order quantities. Literally, our, our smallest customer sends one registered message a year. Um, obviously, we have some, some bigger customers as well. So those are the indirect benefits that, that, that come across. But from a direct perspective, Leon, as you said, it's about a 40% saving in, in your direct postage cost. Okay, before we go through to the questions, I just want to give you an idea that Terence Visa, and I haven't blocked out his name, sent you his email, his cell phone number, 220, and at 226, you got to receive the email. Um, and, and that six minutes, I'm quite impressed with. I have to say that's quite good, because that also takes into account your slow typing, Norman, so it did quite well for me. <laughs> 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 and then the proof of yes, delivery, proof of delivery arrived at 229. I'm presuming Terence stops faster than Norman. Um, so that works quite well. So that he spells properly. He's a teacher, of course, he spells properly. And through, which is quite good. Um, but more seriously, there were some questions that just came through, um, three different questions. Um, I think you can see them. Sorry for the English. I have just copied and pasted, but I haven't put people's names next to the English. Um, if I receive a certificate for each mail sent, it will make your inbox very full, or would you only ask for a report of delivery when you need it? Um, and then someone received three emails, 
one from Norman, one from registered mail, one from no reply. That might be an email set up on their side. I'm not sure. And then the last one was do the list of recipients also go to each recipient or uh, so they see who else got the bulk distribution. I would presume not that only the people who were sent the mail would get the mail that they don't, you don't, everybody sees it. As, you know, it's like a blind CC thing. Not everybody will get everybody else's email addresses. I'm not sure, but maybe I must let you answer those. Norman. Right. Uh, three very, very good, good questions. I'll tackle them one at a time. Um, so yes, if you receive a certificate for each message that you send, your inbox would get very full. It's a simple setting. Uh, do you want the certificate to be returned to the sender? Yes or no? And when we set you up, uh, or it's actually on, on the portal, it becomes a self-managed option uh, where you can use your inbox for the delivery of, of your certificate, or we don't deliver the, the certificate back to you and you retrieve it from the portal, you download it manually from the portal as and when required. Mm -hmm. um, what, what we normally find is in, in many cases, there are teams of people that are using uh, the facility. So each individual wants the ability to receive their own certificates in the inbox. But from a manager perspective, the manager wants to be able to see what everybody in the team has sent, in which he uses the portal. The direct answer to that question is it's absolutely customizable to your requirements and you can turn it on and off literally with a tick box. Uh, second question, you've got three emails from your test, uh, from Norman, from registered email and from no reply. Uh, correct. The first email you received is the email that I sent you. I remember when, when I was typing up the message, it was Norman sending a message to the recipients. So the first email gets delivered to all the recipients in the two fields. The second email that, that you get is the registered email. That's the email from the CC address that goes through the formal registration process. And it is that email that becomes your, uh, your formal notice, your legal proof, et cetera. Um, because we need to send that registered email uh, for you. You can't send a, a registered email. It's a, a, a lovely nuance in our, our legislation. But the second email is the registered email. And the third email, the no reply, is the track and trace report, should be the track and trace report. So from a, a recipient perspective, they do get three emails, quite correct. They get the original email, they get the registered email, and they get the track and trace report. Okay. Yeah. The third question, a list of recipients. Right, so in order to answer this question, we, we need to understand the role that registered communication plays in this process. So we are the witness to the communication that happens. So we, wit we can only witness what happens in the two field or a CC field of, of an email um, as to who those recipients, the recipients are. Which means that if you, like I did in the demo, if you put all the addresses in the two field, uh, the recipient will see all the addresses that the message was sent to as per stock standard uh, email functionality. You also can't put all the addresses in the BCC field so that the recipient doesn't see the addresses because then from our perspective, we can't, we can't see who the message is, is meant to be delivered to. So we can't witness who the message goes to because everything's in, in the BCC field. So from a functional perspective, um, what the, the typical schools do is they, they will send one email to mom and dad number one. They'll send a different email to mom and dad number two and a different email to mom and dad number three. They might think, well, hang on, that's going to take me a, a long time to type up these, these 20 messages, uh, but not really because the, the message body is typically the same message body, so it's cut and paste. And when you compare it to a paper process of printing 20 letters, putting them in envelopes, putting individual addresses on each envelope and sending them, it is, it is, it is still a, a much more efficient process to, to manually type up those, those 20 messages. Depending on in the software that your school uses, uh, Rion, at the beginning, you mentioned uh, D6. Um, I think maybe Jumping Fox was in my head. Uh, mm. I, I heard it with the rest of the, these other voices. Um, we, we have already integrated into various uh, school softwares. The, we have a 
an integration plan for other school software. So depending on the software that, that you use, you'll need to engage with us uh, to, to confirm this. But there's a chance that you can do your bulk messaging directly out of your school software as you currently do and still have the registered option. Norman, we are getting close to, to the, the end of our session. Uh, there are two, three quick questions out there. Um, I don't know if Paul put them on there. But the one is, does the court uh, accept these registered letters? And I think I can answer that based on the presentation that it is a legal registered communication. It is not, uh, it doesn't have any different status than a track and trace legal uh, or a registered communication by means of paper to a parent. Uh, so it's the same stuff. And then there were some questions on, on the costing. So email and SMS, both 18 Rand 50 uh, each. Yes. So the letters, I think the, the, the main thing, and coming back to the question about the bulk email, well, this is actually an individual process. It's not necessarily to, to bulkify it. Uh, and when you use bulk email, you will disclose some information to all the recipients. So it's going to be an individual thing because it replaces an individual process in paper. Um, yes, you can send bulk at, at this point in time, but, but I'm someone just answering that on your behalf, if, if that's okay. I want to end off with, with just a piece of um, information about the costing and, and process it. Uh, registered communication uh, and, and FETSOS joined in, in some form of collaboration as far as making the product available uh, specifically and only to FETSOS members at a reduced price of 5% discount. Uh, now, if you if you send a lot of these letters, the discount is going to be a, a high absolute number. Uh, if you send very few of these, but I'm sure if you've used the registered um, communication or registered letter process before, you know how many how many you send. So, if you go to our FEDSOS uh, website www.fedsos.org.za, there's a rolling banner in the middle of the page, and the um, registered communications company banner is a part of that rolling banner. If you click on that there is an onboarding form that you can get more information. There's a redirect to their to, to registered communications website, but there's also uh, an, an onboarding form, a fill out form that you can, can uh, request more information or sign up for the process. You're also welcome just to, um, we'll, we'll send you the details of this uh, session uh, with Norman's um, contact details. And you're also welcome to contact me at, tech at fetsas.org.za so ja, praat gerust met my, met Norman, met enig iemand raak, en enige vraag hier oor, um, dit, dit, dit maak amper glad nie sin om nie verder hier oor te gesels nie, en terwijl ons nie mag postkantoor toe gaan nie, is dit die enigste manier wat dit in elk geval kan gebeur so, so ja, ons, ons maak nie die deur op om te gesels, um, I don't know if there's a critical last comment or question from you Norman, but we try and stick to, to our 45 minutes, we still see quite a few people online but usually when we get to 45 minutes people uh, start doing other meetings so so from my side thanks so much uh for this this wonderful session practical i think two or three leads uh, leads if you want to call it that people that's asked for information already uh so yeah i think it's very very close to home as core business in a school management process uh we do this already let's just use use the tools of our time to do this there's the banner on the um, FEDSAS website. So if you click on that banner, you will go to an, to an onboarding form. But yeah, thanks. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Norman. You want to say last word or just uh, goodbye? Just a, a thank you and, and goodbye. All the information's on the website and we'd love to engage with you to share more information. Yeah, uh, Paul. No, that's very much, Norman. Anything from you? Yeah, no, I think it's really good. Um, I, I won't split the, spread the rumor, but one of our provincial, one of our employees who is a chairman at a school has already said it's going to be discussed at their next finance meeting. And those of you that know Fed says quite well might know who that is. And yours truly here will also discuss it at our next finance meeting. We'll probably discuss it before the next finance meeting, in fact. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. I think it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, not that we like sending registered communication, but I think we have to send registered communication in the world that we live in. So I think it's really got a wonderful space and it's, it's really a good, a good process to make sure you can yeah, do that process properly and more effectively from that side. So thanks very much, Norman. Thanks for your time and, and for sharing this with all of us from our, from our FEDSA side. Thanks very much. And then everybody, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Have a good afternoon further. Cheers. Cheers, everybody.